Have a great movie and want a game based on it? Have a great game and want a movie based on it? Well, it's been proven time and time again that video games and movies just can't seem to get on the same page. No matter how many times it's attempted, the outcome is always the same. Until this very moment. Street Fighter the Movie The Game, a joint collaboration between Capcom and Intelligent Design released in 1995. After playing Jackie Chan Kung Fu Master and Fists of Fire, I just had to play another game that used digitized actors, and what better game than this? Just look at the massive roster, the sweet moves, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Raul Julia, and this guy! Man, just thinking about playing this got me excited. So let's dive right in and quickly cover controls as they are the same as any Street Fighter game. Low, mid, high kicks and punches, and an 8-way joystick for all those hurricane kicks you're gonna perform. Perfect. What do you need to learn? How to throw Hadoukens. Graphics? Look at how real they are! 10 out of 10, clearly! Audio, you ask? Pfft. Phenomenal! And did I enjoy this? Oh, heck yeah, I did! This game gets a definite continue. Woo! Let's wrap it up. Fantastic. Street Fighter the Movie Game. Love it. Play it. See you next week. Alright, alright. Maybe I got a bit too hyped up. Let me try that again. Street Fighter the Movie The Game. Another weird novelty that I'm glad we got. I mean, who would think Street Fighter would make an amazing Hollywood blockbuster? But then, step the weirdness factor up a notch and make a game based on the movie, which is already based on a game. The levels of pure genius are astonishing. But while I want to say I love everything about this game, I just can't because let's face it, I'm gonna compare it to Street Fighter 2, which means you're going against some of the most iconic music, sound effects, and visuals in video game history. And that is exactly where Street Fighter the movie The Game lacks the most. The music gets repetitive fast, as each track sounds exactly the same. Which is really unfortunate because, again, music in Street Fighter 2 is just amazing. I get that music in this game is supposed to mirror the atmosphere of the stages from the movie, but they are just so damn bland. You can, however, input codes during the Versus screen to listen to a remix track of earlier Street Fighter games, which is pretty cool, but then begs the question, why didn't they just play those songs during the actual game? Why do I have to figure out an input command to listen to Ken's theme? What? The sound effects? Well, the Okay, they aren't bad, but they aren't great either. It's really weird hearing Ken shout each time you pull off a Tatsumaki Senpu Kyaku, which I probably totally butchered just now, which probably also explains why they just stuck with Hurricane. But my biggest gripe is easily the graphics. Yeah, the backgrounds look kind of bland and at times really bad, and some moves look quite a bit off, but when it comes to Akuma, I just straight up lose my shit. What the fuck is this? Why is he ice skating? What? what is that pose? You can't tell me. It was too hard to have the actor hold this pose for more than a second. If anything, this figure skater pose is much harder than his initial shift pose. I mean, what, what is it? I can't even... Sure. My disgust for this move may come from the fact that Akuma is a cheap bastard in this game whose damage output is way too high, just like his max health, causing me to lose over 10 times in a row, which ultimately made me shout out like a berserker before I slammed my fist into the table, which in turn made my neighbors look at me with confusion, which pissed me off even more, so I told them to mind their own fucking business, followed by me slamming my window shut. Akuma is broken as hell. His attack hitboxes are massive, you think you jump over his super, yet it still somehow connects. And you think you jumped over a simple air Hadouken, but nope, you still take the hit. Even blocking his super does more damage to you than you do to him if you land a simple move. So, I decided just to cheese him. My original recorded footage of my playthrough was corrupted, so I had to play through it all again. I wasn't looking forward to because of Akuma. Except this time, it 
was Honda who gave me hell. Honestly, his moveset is a joke. The things he's able to do just make me want to rage quit. Jumping off the screen to attack you, pulling off a super which isn't punishable, and then this? D did you see that? Let me play it again. E Honda has a freaking AoE attack that does way too much damage. Who the heck thought it was a good idea to put an AoE attack in a fighting game? There's just no excuse for that. Absolutely none. And the cheapest thing I didn't even encounter during my first playthrough. M. Bison's damage output. Look at this damage. Since when did a Psycho Crusher that isn't a super do this much damage? Heck, all of his attacks do crazy damage. It's insane. The first time I played through the game, I beat him in my first attempt, but this time it took me at least five tries because he just kept killing me in less than 20 seconds. I honestly can't help but feel the damage output from a player to CPU is unbalanced. I can pull off a five hit combo at the beginning of the match and take no hits, yet don't do as much damage as a CPU does when he hits me twice. I initially wanted to say that I think this game is good, and like I said, I do love it for its novelty, but the game needed more work. If Capcom themselves had made this game, a lot more people would probably enjoyed it, myself included. However, while it may not be the complete package, I still somehow enjoy it. There's just a certain level of cheese to it, and it just feels good seeing Jean-Claude in a game. Which reminds me, it's actually surprising that most of the movie's cast members reprise their role for this game. The only exception being Roel Julian as M. Bison. The mocap for him was done by Darko Tuscan, who was his stunt double in the movie. Julia was interested in doing the mocap, but was already very ill at the time. It would have been awesome to play as him, that's for sure. You may also have noticed that some characters are missing, like DJ, T-Hawk, Blanca, and so on. While DJ and Blanca were later added to the home console versions, T-Hawk and others weren't so lucky. In fact, the console versions actually lost the character while gaining two. Blade, one of Vice's shock troopers, is only playable in the arcade version of Street Fighter the movie the game. But I honestly think nobody cares. So, with Street Fighter the movie already having a pretty bad reputation, the game didn't have it much easier. And while I do enjoy the movie a lot, the game, well, I don't know. After playing it for an hour and having such troubles with Bison and e Honda, I really don't want to play it again anytime soon. But I also don't find it completely terrible. It's obvious that Incredible Technologies tried their best, and I did have fun playing till I got to these two. So I'm gonna say Street Fighter the movie the game gets a continue once I've cooled off, but right now, it's game!